remember a dozen or fifteen. Okay. We'll go from there. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Goshen Township Trustee Meeting, September 14, 2015, 7 p.m. Please be sure to sign in, check the box if you'd like to speak. <coughs> We'll start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. That's for the 10th. Uh, yes, for the 10th. Call second motion to accept the minutes from the 10th. Roll we'll call vote, Mr. McCracken? Yes. Mr. Beeson? Yes. Mr. Hyman? Yes. And I'll make a motion uh, to accept the minutes uh, as presented from the special meeting. No second motion to accept the minutes from the special meeting also. Roll we'll call vote, Mr. Beeson? Yes. Mr. Hyman? Yes. Mr. McCracken? Yes. inside and outside the 10 mill, and the estimated income for general fund road, county health, police, and fire. And it's pretty much the same as last year, same rates as last year, dollars changed just very little bit. So I need somebody to uh, make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Uh, we accept that to send off to the auditors. I'll second. Okay, roll call vote. Mr. McCracken? Yes. Mr. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Mason? Yes. And I will sign that to the auditor. Also, I had to have to revise the appropriations for the funds. Uh, they bought body cameras, and with law enforcement trust fund has to be increased, the spending on it has to be increased a little bit to, for those cameras. The money's there. We just we showed more income than we projected originally. We showed more expenses than we projected originally, but they're in, still kind of in sync. Uh, also, the police uh, for insurance, for when we did insurance, it increased $151, and when we did road and bridge for insurance, it, it had to increase $1,124, so I need to make those changes and send that to the auditor. Who would like to make that revision? I'll make a motion on that. I'll second. We'll call vote, Mr. Beeson? Yes. Mr. Hyman? Yes. Mr. McCracken? Yes. Okay, last month we talked about the savings account, or the checking account. We're currently being charged $35 a month for the uh, automated clearinghouse fee. And it's being offset a little bit by some uh, charges that uh, they charge you when you make a deposit, when you write a check, when you do electronic 
payment, we do a payroll payment. Uh, there's a little charge for each of those, but because we uh, we carry so much money in our account, they're recommending, or the bank's recommending, we can do better if we make some changes. Our current checking account, which has 658000 in it, is paying 0.02%. The Star Ohio account, which has had 43000 uh, this is 43,765 today, but I don't think we've ever touched it in seven years. Uh, it's earning 0.11%. So basically a tenth of a percent. Uh, I rec uh, the banker and I recommend that we close the Star Ohio. We put that money in checking and then we convert the checking account from a public funds interest bearing account to a commercial analysis fund. That's just paperwork. Uh, doesn't change the checks, doesn't change the account number or anything like that. Then we can take $200,000 of that money, which will then be around $700,000 in checking. $200,000 into a two-year Cedars account paying 0.804%, which is like uh, 40 times what we're getting on our checking account. And then we invest $100,000 for one year at 0.501%. And then we invest at least 100000 in the money market, which will pay 0.08, which again is four times what we're making. And we always need to keep about $200,000 in checking. But as money increases, we can pull some out of checking, put it back into the money market. Or if we need money, we'll take it out of the money market and put it back into checking. It's a manual effort. It's not like our old sweep account where it was automatic. We have to do it. And... Uh, if we do that, we'll make a whole lot more on interest, although it's still not very much, but it's a lot more than we're making today. Now, what's a Cedars account? A Cedars is a certificate of deposit accounts, account registry service. It's, uh, for a U, uh, it's a U.S. for-profit service that brings up large deposits, or excuse me, breaks up large deposits from individuals, companies, nonprofits, public funds, etc., and places them in a, across a network of more than 3,000 banks and savings associations around the U.S. And the good thing about that is that you don't have to have uh, investment training to be involved in that. If I, when I was in some of those other things that they wanted, the, you know, like a like a CD, a, just a regular CD, you had to have money market, you had to have an investing uh, certificate from the state. This you don't need it, so we have no control over it. I mean, we, we give it to them and they, they invest it. And we can't tell them where to invest it. They just invest it for the best best they can do. So uh, I would recommend we do what I just said about closing STAR and moving some funds around. And, and we are going to be locking ourselves in for one year at 300000 and two years at 200000 that we can't get that money, but we've never gone. She said she didn't, she looked over the last uh, year. We've never gone be below uh, over five hundred thousand in our combined account star and checking. Right. So we've never gone below. So I think we're very safe in doing this. This is all approved and by the auditor, then, Tom. What's that? This is all approved by the auditor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I would make a motion that we go ahead and switch the checking account and close the Star Ohio, move it in Okay. with the other funds. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, roll call vote. Mr. McCracken? Yes. Mr. Beeson? Yes. Mr. Heinemann? Yes. Uh, still talking with my friends at at and um, The latest thing they did was a couple weeks ago I came in on a Monday and none of the phones were working at all. The internet wasn't working. We called the phone uh, data comm to come in thinking it might be our phone system itself. It wasn't. And then he told me there's a truck down the road at the diagonal. So I went down there and sure enough, AT&T was working on the lines. So we had, were out about 16 hours out of service, completely out of service. and. Uh, that's going to be another issue I add to the credits that I'm asking for. But, I mean, you ask for it, and it takes months and months and months and months, and you get a day late, and they let you know it. So. Uh, also, we have three lots. Uh, we sold three lots at Bunker Hill. 
new section, Lot 121, and uh, we need you guys to sign the Certificate of Ownership for Ground Rights Interment. Derek, you've changed again. Pulled <laughs> <laughs> in, and I forgot the report. I got the wrong report. I had to go back home and get the right report. <laughs> oh, hang on. I didn't realize you had the report. Yeah, Jim. Jim reports that he puts 964 miles on the vehicles in August. There were no barrels. 105 gallons of fuel were used. Ten tons of asphalt were spread. Okay. Sorry about that, Tom. Sorry. All right, now Derek. Derek had to work. <laughs> He's working tonight. So yeah, call me. Uh, Goshen Township Trustees here. August 2015 report. Damascus Fire uh, month of August. We had uh, 41 calls. EMS was 29, 16 in Goshen, 9 in Butler, 3 others, and 1 in Knox. We had 12 fire runs. And uh, again, if whether you're a resident or not, please. Uh, wear your seatbelt when you come through and at all times, please. Um, the department responded to a large barn and garage fire uh, and appeared to be burning for quite a while before anybody noticed it and got a, got a call, but they, they did save the house and the things in the house, so uh, it was a shame because that was a hundred year old barn and was shed that, they, that we lost, so. But yeah, uh, he Derek wants to thank everybody that was involved in all the other departments for the great help and response that they got and, and to do that. So, again, please, no open burnings because um, if it's get complaints, we have to we have to put it out. So, uh, if you are going to burn, don't don't burn trash, furniture, plastics, you know, and things like that. So, we appreciate it. Uh, we've had lately uh, runs at our local trailer parks that are not calls that they should be calling the ambulance for. It's they just want to ride to the emergency room. They don't feel good or stub the toe. You know, I mean, absolutely the calls are not warrant um, you know, an ambulance call. They, you know, so. But we've been getting quite a few of them again. So I just wanted to report on that. And most important, we're always accepting new applications for membership. So please, if anybody's interested, contact Derek. And it's 330-853-4418, please. We're always looking for good help. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks, Tom. Okay, Paul. Saturday is our big event in recycling. Um, we'll be doing a scrap tire drive and a scrap electronics drive. We'll be taking tires anywhere from wee little guys up to the great big monster tractor tires and everything in between. Uh, we'll be taking electronics. Basically anything with a cord on it is recyclable. So keep that in mind if you got, you know, things around. Uh, bring them on in, and I appreciate it. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell everybody about it. I'd like to get a big turnout. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Tim, Steve isn't here, and we don't have a report there. So. Uh, paper here. Yeah, he said there were 376 events handled by the department in August. 7,192 miles put on vehicles. That's all I've got. Yeah. Okay.
good, Tom. Huh? Oh, I'm good. I'm You're good? good. <laughs> I, you never know. You, know, you might need to see something. So, appreciate it. Thank you. Just keep the glory left. I would like to say thanks to the road crew for the great job they've done keeping our, our part of the road. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you. They're doing a great job. That was Justin. Oops. Okay. Roger. Uh, did you, either one of you, look at that double culvert up there on Smith Cushion? I, I yeah. forgot. I think Todd got up. So. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. The last I talked to Jared, he had talked to Jeff Downs, Quaker, Septic. Jeff says he could build one, but he couldn't set it. So he's leaning toward maybe putting another block one up or a cord poured in place. And I told him that was his deal. We'll, we'll change the culverts. All right. But uh, and then, uh, talking with Jim, I told him I'd like to we'll do it like a little precast to set the on the east side of the road there, just like a saddle for them uh, culverts so that hopefully don't start to wash in between them. And Jim said he, uh, he thought he could make them and maybe pour them like when he uh, did some cemetery footers or something so we didn't have the extra. So, uh, but Jared really hasn't said anything more about it so I don't know if he's got somebody in line to Build the box if he's going to do it. You know, I don't want to get too far. In. You know, he, if he wants to do a pour in place, we'll have to get the call to him, and then he'll have to work around that. Right. right. But so I'll. Yeah, we got to make sure he's doing it before we get in there and do the culverts. So. Yeah. I'll bring right. the culverts or I'll bring the basin and see if I can put it in there. Well, it'll be two 24 inch. See, one's a 24 and one's a 21 now, I think. Yeah. I figured on two 24s. Because I suggested getting two four foot boxes and tying them together and put one just a little lower than the other one. Because uh, when I was up there and looked at it, he's got enough room instead of fooling around with basins. Why doesn't he put a retention pond in? Because it doesn't hold water unless you have a heavy enough rain that the pipe can't handle it that he's got going down under that waterway. And they're designed to collect the excess water and once the rain is over, they drain down slowly. It's not gonna you know, it's not gonna be an issue where it's gonna be full of water that close to the road. It'd be a lot easier to maintain because if you grade your slips right you can still brush hold it, mow it or whatever. It'd be a lot. I think it'd just be a lot less maintenance, a lot, probably a lot cheaper than putting in a uh, giant box culvert. And you know, if it ever would go over the bank, he's got that grass waterway there, which that's what it's designed for, is to carry. Yes, right. But I just, I don't know. When I looked at it, if it was me, I think I'd maybe do some checking. Because there has been times it's gone over the road there. We all know right. that. Because there. There's no real perfect solution to it. Right, it's pretty flat up there. Yeah. And the other thing, I I have no idea how much falls in that 12-inch pipe. You know, whether they brought it up to the existing box or if it's that's close. It looks like it comes up, but well, you'd have to shoot with the transit to make sure. But you know, just it's just a suggestion. I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll suggest it to him. Might work out better than actually because <coughs> if he sets a box over, you have to get down on those to clean them up so that you always have your catch below your pipe. Right. With a retention pond, you don't. You know, I mean, the only way to do that, you have to get down there with a bucket and shovel all the slag and sill down. And then you're talking to rip wrapping the edges so it the edges or even where the water would normally run. I mean, you could put some rip wrap to keep that from eroding. Film, film and break it up before it gets... Okay. I mean, it's just a suggestion, but it might work out better than an actual giant box culvert. 
then we you know, get it off the edge of the road. That's right. And, you know, unless unless you have a heavy rain where it starts to fill with water, ninety nine percent of the time it's going to be empty. It's going to be drained down. And right. Okay. Well, I'll suggest that to Jerry, and we'll see what we we'll come up with. Other than that, that's all I have. So you're, you're going to talk about the the truck deal then, more. Yeah, I mean, any we'll of us can bring it up. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So. I just want to thank Bob and Roger for helping with the fair display. And I especially want to thank Millie Mather and Tom Mather. They provided a lot of the old, uh, just about all the old feathers we had of Garfield. I appreciate that. I think it was pretty informative and very interesting. Uh, the only other thing I have, I noticed when I was out getting pictures that the old rusted signs are still up for Gotchel and Spike Industries. I was wondering maybe if we could pull those because all it is is something to mow around. They're kind of the posts are all rusted, the signs are all rusted. You can hardly read them. And I just think it might not be a bad idea if we just looks kind of trashy if we just pull those out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely we should just get rid of those. Never even thought about it. But yeah. It'd just be less to mow around, and it's right. getting to where they're kind of an eyesore. Yeah, I'm just hitting them. Yeah, was it Gosh, what was it? Spike, Spike Industries. Yeah. They're on the same Spike. Side. Yeah, they're on the same sign, but right. both industries are gone. And yeah. How many old signs is it talking about? Yeah. There's two. I'm not 100% certain. I know we have at least two, but they just. <coughs> might be a third one. There might be one on County Section of Middletown. I'm not sure. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Well, we had a request from a gentleman that's here tonight that uh, is interested in running our hall here uh, every Sunday uh, for starting a church. And I've mentioned to the other two trustees. Uh, I don't know if you want to say a little bit about what you're trying to do, or just for worship services and preaching, just preaching of God's word every Sunday for the people in the area here. Uh, traditional hymns, yeah. basically, and so it'll be open for everyone, and kind of type of thing. Yeah. And that's what we're kind of just just want to get uh, God's word out on a regular basis, you might say, and make it public. For people and worship service and regular traditional hymns too. And, um, so that's no. basically it. And for for ten, yeah, ten two hours segment. Uh, hopefully from ten to twelve each Sunday, and you know, just to kind of present that as my um, see if that'd be that'd be possible. Okay. Was you thinking about having any type of Sunday school too, or? Uh, probably, um, it could be Sunday school, yeah, probably join together with the worship service, uh, not with the worship service, but right before. Um, sometimes it might be a little special, like on Easter, we might have like a special presentation of, of something, a uh, DVD or something, that sort of thing, and, um, as, as well as a message, but, um, but we buy like Christmas too. Christmas there'll be special times during the year that we there are special <coughs> events and maybe from time to time having a, a collective uh, meal together. People that come get to know each other a little better that way after the service is done. And, uh, so that's basically what I'm what we're asking for. I mean. I I think it's a great idea what you're doing there. Uh, it just, I think, in my opinion, I need to check with the prosecutor. This being a government building, oh, okay. where we legally stand on something like this, mm -hmm. has ever been brought up to us before? It's sort of a new uh, thing that I've been asked about. Okay. I, uh, I, I have uh, been involved with my uncle in the United States okay. in town halls, okay. and that he's. 
they done that before. And, okay. uh, no, it's been years back. But yeah. um, whether it's still the same, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah. I, like I said, I, I don't have a clue on that. I think that's our next step is what we discuss anymore is to find out if it's even a possibility or not before we do any further. So. No, we're willing to wait. Okay. Right. I think we need to run it through the prosecutor's office and get an answer from them. And right. then we need to weigh how it's going to affect the operations with the police department. And yeah, the different Snow things. removal. And, I mean, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. Right. Plus, uh, you have an issue with liability insurance also. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's another thing I want to check with the insurance company. And then I got to thinking about around the holidays and so forth. And, well, graduations, we do a lot of rentals and that, and if it's tied up every Sunday, that sort of cuts into some of our rental time there, too. Okay, so, sure, whatever, whatever uh, would work. Uh, yeah, so it's just, I guess there's a lot of questions that need to be answered, and uh, more than we can just do tonight, okay. so uh, we will investigate it a little farther, and we'll just stay in touch with you then, okay. so. Sure, yeah, that sounds good. All right. Okay. Well, on the issue one project for the Damascus uh, catch basins to get everything submitted, it was approved. I mean, the packet was uh, filled up properly. We did get 52 points on. I think the highest one right now is running at 56. Uh, we do it next Tuesday. We have the uh, three-minute session to present to them why we think we need the project and. Then it would go on from there. It takes about three months for the whole process before we know who gets what. But it seems like we're right up there in the top of the running right now to start out with, which is a very good point place to be. So, uh, as the big topic was going to be was for the special hauling permits for the Mahoning County roads here, but again the sheriff sort of backed out. He wants the engineer's office to be here at the same time to discuss the permitting which I did lay out the permit packets back here for anybody who wants to take them home and look at them. Uh, talk with him, the scale man again today we were discussing township roads and they're also going to scale the township roads even though the county isn't doing the permitting for the township roads which I think we've got some issues on that one. Uh, they always have done our bonding if somebody's becoming with heavy equipment or for a well or whatever on our township roads, but according to Tim at the engineer's office, they're not going to permit for our roads. According to the sheriff, uh, Coitsville Township supposedly already has done this. Township has one uh, packet that the farmers have to fill out and the county has another one and the farmer has to carry both in every vehicle. <laughs> so every time I talk to them I get more questions and no answers. So Why Yeah. I mean and they are in the area we know because they've already scaled some equipment in this area, so <laughs> And from my understanding it was on a township road. That's what we're just discussing. I didn't know until we talked tonight which section of the road it was on, so that brings up another issue. So they are going. How can they? How can they stop us from? We have to clean our pits out. We have to haul our manure. Right. Is that next thing they're going to tell us that we can't even do that? Well, when I first the first phone call I had with uh, Dave Moss from the sheriff's department, he's the head of the scale crew. He says, I'm not blaming the farmer. He says, I'm blaming the equipment manufacturer. He says, they don't build the equipment to where it's legal. Well, but the farmers have purchased all this equipment. We're using all this equipment. You can't change it overnight. And But, yeah, he's out there writing these tickets. When I talked to the engineer's office last week, they said, well, we're trying to get everybody on board for January 1, first of the year. I thought that was good. Give some working time to get into it. I said that to him. He says, well, they better start prorating it because I'm, I'm out there scaling now and I'm going to ticket now. So I, uh, he said, I've been doing it 
in areas of the county all summer. And I, uh, I don't know. I just, I just really feel that someone's got it in for agriculture. Well, they've had it in for effort. Yeah, but I mean, more, more someone locally has got a, a bone to pick with somebody, and I don't know what it is, but... Uh, Take one person to run for anybody. Yeah. So anyhow, they wanted to come next month. I said, no. I said, I want one sooner. I says, you guys get together, set a date that all of you can be here. We'll hold a special meeting. I said, I want to do it yet this month. So it was let everyone know as soon as I could get word back from them. So, you know, okay. That's all I can say on it. And I would say preferably an evening meeting because... Oh, yeah, definitely evening. I mean, I I think they've understood that, but yeah, definitely evening. As long as, as, long as they make it after 7, 8 o'clock, so a lot of the farmers can get here. Right. And I'm going to make sure that if I don't hear within a couple, three days, I'm going to start bugging them. I'm not going to just set back on them and I'll get it scheduled. So. Will this be open to other townships? Uh... Yeah, I mean, it can be anybody that's interested. I mean, because I haven't heard of any other townships even getting involved. Has Smith talked about anything on discussion? Not that I know of. I know uh, they're back, oh, I'm going to say in March, they scaled a truck over there and they confiscated the trailer and the excavator for several days till uh, it got moved out. I mean, it's out at the county garage. Um, you know, and well, I had a Smith Township resident ask if he could come <coughs> tonight to further his, and I said, yeah, not a problem, of course, right. and he was another one I had put a call into yeah. saying it wasn't coming. Yeah, but I, uh, I'd had a couple from Green that were going to come also, so yeah, I think it can be open to whoever, because, I mean... Everybody's in the same boat. It's not just our township. Not, yeah. When they come to talk to us, it's not yeah. going to be just about us. It's going no. to be about all, all the county. All the county. All the county. Right. county is what it's about. So that's well, it's not. You know, it's not just the farmers. Only, though, only farmers. Right. Yeah. No. 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 You got contractors and yeah. 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 They're just Cause, really. Uh, well, I. Uh, there's semi feed trucks that come into the area. On a very regular basis, and then they're one of the uh, growers are concerned about the feed trucks coming in and getting the chickens out. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's have to do with all of us, yeah. another concern, too. So, we'll just keep everyone updated as much as we can. Okay. Now well, we discussed the last meeting a little bit about the furnace for the old building next door. The lady quilters over there, they want to hold a fundraiser, some sort of a meal. And I wonder if they could use our building here. And I said it wouldn't be any problem. They're going to put it towards the furnace. So I think that's great. They want to put wherever they get it taken in. 100% of it would go towards the furnace for there. So uh, I think between now and next meeting, I'll get a couple more estimates on new furnaces. So we have some comparison. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, the next meeting is October, and uh, I think we've all seen snow fly in October. I, I, I know what you're thinking, but I did have the furnace running. So. Oh, okay. It, okay. <laughs> It, it does run at the moment. They can get some heat. Yes, yes. Okay. It, the water was only up into the fan motor. Once it's dried out, it started to run. The burner unit's igniting. Everything's working when I was over there a couple weeks ago. So I think we're good till through the next meeting. So unless you guys want to do something sooner. But, uh, well, <laughs> you know, there's these that will, whoever you you get the furnace from, are they going to have it in stock, or is it going to be a, a month order uh, process? I guess that's where I was kind of looking at. The quote that I had for last meeting, that one could be installed within two days. Okay. Uh, others, I mean, I don't know, but 
he did have that one in stock. He stocks that one at all times, and so within a couple of days he can be out and putting that one in. So, and I'm sure he's out of the air conditioning isn't quite as busy as it was, so he's probably got more time yet yeah. now. So. Okay, and uh, muskrats, I guess, discussion is uh, he's not seasoned and open until November, so we really can't Should be around the first part of November is when the trapping season opens. And you had someone you were going to talk to that traps to... Well, it was Brian. Yeah. Henry, and okay. Brian is working yeah, so out of the area now, so... I thought you had someone else that... No, because Fred, you know, Fred originally was going to do it, mm -hmm. and just a bit of a crime, and he wanted to, uh, I don't know if Tom's got his driver's license yet or not, so. Mm -hmm. I don't do those crops anymore. Uh, well, if Pat still does, he wanted to before. Well, we need to try and get in touch so we get someone lined up so when season so, starts, we yeah. have them lined up for Well, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, everybody try to find somebody that for the next meeting, then we'll yeah. just, when they, one season opens up, they can, our guy in there. <laughs> He's giving me a hole. <laughs> Why did he go around? What's that? Why did you go around? <laughs> uh, I, I might know a young kid that does, yeah, I'll, I'll ask him if he's with me. He just got married, so his wife may have a little thing to say about that. No. <laughs> but uh, he likes to. I mean, I can find out for that for you okay. too. Okay, appreciate it. And can't you guys get a special permit from the? Uh, yeah, I talked to the. We'll call it the game warden. Yeah, Tom, yeah. Because Fred was going to do it. Well, then, you know, graduation come and left, and the fair come and left, and the other fair, and he's. I, we haven't got any satisfaction out of it. So. Okay. If it's I mean, not, I know we do what would work. You know, do it. Yeah, the um, game warden said if it's not during trapping season, the carcasses can't be harvested for the pellets they have to be disposed of. So that yeah. makes it a little rougher getting someone out of season. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know you can't sell anything like that, but you know, when they become a nuisance, it's like, yeah, throw his ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many do you want? <laughs> thing I have on the agenda is Armstrong uh, <coughs> sent us a certified letter. The uh, request for renewal of the cable franchise, uh, they want us to go over our franchise agreement, see if we'll renew it. Uh, they would like to do it by January 1 next year, so we have some time to discuss it. Uh, no changes on their side of it. Uh, I know once we get it straightened out, we're getting a decent amount from it yeah. right now. So about twenty-five hundred bucks a quarter, I think. Yeah, so I don't want to give that up. So just something that we can think about. And if you have any questions or whatever, then I'll put it back on agenda for next meeting. So. Okay. Yeah. And uh, informational. Uh, Board of Health is going to uh, do a flu clinic here Wednesday, October 7th, 1 to 3.30. Uh, no appointments needed, just walk-ins. So. Does it have a cost on there, Bob? Uh, no, it does not. These are the ones they put out. I know they will accept the insurances also. They just, uh, but no, they don't have a cost on it. So. I think it was for a real reasonable last year when they did it, but I don't remember what it was. So. What was the hour, Uh, 1 to 3.30. Okay. And, uh, and then we got a letter here from ODOT. Uh, it's amending uh, well, revised code 44.11.61. Uh, they're putting stop signs at Passive Railroad Crossings and they're going to put stop signs at the one on Cal. <laughs> Even though it's not being used, they're going to put new signage up. So <laughs> I don't know if 
something we need to discuss with them because why or what. But I'm not sure. I think they asphalted over. Yeah, they did. But they're still. Yeah, they still have to put the signage up since it's actually still a rail line. According to you guys can read it, but that's the way I take it. <laughs> Has to be done by a certain date, 2016. So, who's doing that? The state. Mm -hmm. Is that no cost to us? Yeah, yeah, it's something we have to do. It's just uh, between them and the rail company. I think actually the rail company does it, but. Yes. Mr. McCracken? Yes. Mr. Mason? Yes. 